What's going on guys? This video we're going to show you the basics of Kilowatt and what you need to know to get started to use the app. Now if this is your first time using the app you're going to want to do a few things uh, to get your bike on the road and I'll um, walk you through those steps here. Um, up in the right hand corner there's going to be an add button. You're going to want to make sure your Bluetooth is on and your bike is on and on a stand as well. Um, your bike should be listed as e-bike in the list if um, the name hasn't been changed and the dealer hasn't changed the name. Um, otherwise, right now, I'm just going to start with a simulated back controller as I don't have a bike currently in front of me. You're going to want to name your bike. Um, and this is going to be the name that's going to show up in the list. So we'll just name it as test. Auto start mode is up to you. Um, but this is what um, the app will start up when you um, select the app on your phone. If you select off, you will just have to go in and select um, the dashboard in the garage section. Um, or you can just have it automatically go to the dashboard. So we'll add this here. When you first add a bike, it's going to create a backup and the backups will be listed um, in the settings of the bike. So we can name this just first backup. And there you go, your bike is added to kilowatt. Not so fast though. Um, in this section here, once you add your bike, um, a few little points here. Under device, this is where you can view all your backups. You can upload, download, or delete. You can also view all your backups so you can load a backup from another bike or you can export it to send to a buddy um, so they can use it on their controller as well so once you get the bike added you want to make sure that it's showing voltage and it's connected if you go into the setup screen here um, it's going to start you out in the controller tab now in this tab, there is some quick setup options that you want to run um, when you first add the bike to the Kilowatt app. You're going to want to run the motor setup wizard. And again, you want to make sure that the bike is on a stand when you run this. Very simple to use. Just going to select your motor. It's going to rotate the wheel and detect all of the um, settings of the motor. So your, your hull sensor settings, how many poles, and so forth. The next thing you're, uh, the next thing you're going to want to run is the throttle wizard. Now this is a pretty simple wizard. It's going to have you twist the throttle a couple times. And then once it gets to the dead band uh, settings, the lows and highs, it's going to have you test it out here in this screen. Um, if I did have a bike connected, it would read 0 to 100. That's what you're going for. If it reads anything less or more than 100, you're going to want to rerun the calibration wizard or check the connections of your bike. Once everything looks good, you just simply hit looks good and then hit save up in the upper right hand corner. Now all these settings that you see on this app, Kilowatt is reading directly from the controller. So once you hit save, it's going to overwrite any current settings on the controller and upload the settings that you put on Kilowatt. These are hard settings, which means um, after each power cycle, whatever settings you put will remain on the controller, which is good. Had a little app crash there. This app is in beta testing, guys, um, so you will experience some hiccups here and there. It does get better daily, uh, but there is a lot of users right now running this app and we've had great success and I'm uh, happy to share it with you guys. So um, I went back into the app. It went right back into the dashboard like I selected. Um, this is a dashboard here. Uh, I'll go over that here in a second. 
Um, to go back to the previous page, you're just gonna go up in the left-hand corner and swipe to the right. And that will get you back into your vehicle section. So let's go back up into setup. Um, once you do the motor and throttle calibration, you're gonna wanna hit save up in the right-hand corner. This is where all of your diagnostic messages will uh, live. So if you do have a fault on your controller, they will kind of show up here and you can clear them as well. Under the power tab, this is where you're gonna go to input your voltage for your battery. So if you have a stock battery, you're gonna wanna make sure um, it's 60 volt or whatever battery you have in there. And then for stock non-bypass, I would select the 4.8. If you have a bypass battery, I would start at the 7.2 kilowatt profile, and from there you can adjust uh, accordingly. Phase amps, a back 4,000, you can only go up to 431. A 8,000, um, you can do up in the 800 range. My recommendations are if you have a aftermarket battery on the back 4,000, I would do at least 431, the max. And then the field weakening, I would start around 9%. Now again, these settings will be different per person, um, but you'll be adjusting these settings regularly as you go out in tune. So once you have everything set, make sure you hit save up in the right-hand corner, and then we can move on to the throttle tab. In the previous page, we did calibrate the throttle, and um, the settings that it pulled will be uh, displayed here. So you have 0.920 as your low, four volts for your high, and 0.200 volts for your dead band voltage. Now this is the voltage that the throttle starts to operate, so this is gonna be the play in the beginning. So you want it at a point where if you're going down a trail and you're jerking, that it's not giving you throttle. So you wanna have a little bit of a gap there in the beginning. Torque curve tuning, um, this is your ramp time your release time for your throttle and your brakes. This is how fast the throttle is going to ramp up. So if you like a snappy response, um, you can start around 50 milliseconds and go up and down from there. Brake modes, um, if you guys have a harness that supports it, you can use your cutoff levers. You can use a thumb regen or you can use your levers um, as a regen. So when you apply the brake, it will apply regen. So a few settings in there as well, um, but it does give you the state of everything. So once you hit the lever, it should hit braking. If you don't want any of that cut, uh, if you don't want any of the brakes set up for regen braking, you can just hit none. And you also have engine braking as an option as well. So again, once you have all those settings saved or, or inputted, make sure you hit save up in the right-hand corner. The next tab we have is a drivetrain. This is where you're going to go to change all your settings about your motor as well as your gearing. Um, so we'll display the right miles per hour. Some basic options here. This is where you're gonna to go to run the motor setup wizard again, if you'd like. Um, your wheels and gearing, the wheel diameter, uh, if you have your stock wheel sizes in there, um, or if you have the supermoto tires, or you're running a different sprocket, um, this is where you're gonna to go to adjust the wheel diameter which in turn will adjust your miles per hour. My suggestion is um, get it close and then go out with a GPS app. And you can um, look at the roadside sign, like a speed sign compared to your miles per hour on the app and then just go up and down accordingly. Temperature limits, um, you guys are welcome to use the same temperature limits as I do below. Um, but a rule of thumb is uh, you don't want to get these motors too hot and you don't want to get the RPMs too high. So heat and RPMs will kill these motors. Under advanced tuning, 
um, this is we're going to go to select your um, power limits or set points for um, if you'd like to have more tuning and control over your throttle as well as the regular bandwidth and the PLL bandwidth um, KP, KI, these are all advanced settings. If you guys don't know what these settings do, do not change them because you will ruin your bike. Um, best bet is to consult with some tuning guys on here or, or go online or consult with your dealer that you bought the controller from. Under console, this is going to be how the bike uh, or how the app handles um, its settings. Um, so if you have an APT display, you can use the APT display. Um, when you do use a display, the display takes uh, full control of the settings. So for instance, if you have Egg Rider or APT, the app is going to know that and automatically use those settings. So if you do have an Egg Rider and select you know, 10,000 watts in Egg Rider, but on the app you selected maybe 5,000 watts, that egg rider is going to um, take priority over the kilowatt. Now, if you don't want to use a display, um, which I don't personally use a display, if you hit none and make sure those displays are off and you can even unplug them, if you hit none, the bike is going to use whatever kilowatt settings we'll use. And when you turn the key, it's gonna be always on, so you don't have to rely on a display. So this is good if, if you're out and about and you crash and it cracks your display or damages it and it won't turn on, um, you can use the app here, or at least the none setting, to get you back on the road without relying on a, another device. Sport Eco Switch, um, this does have switch mapping. So if you do have a factory switch and the harness supports it, you can select, for instance, both or power, and it's gonna have you flip your factory switches. If they are hooked up, it'll recognize the change, and then you can use your factory switch um, to adjust the power and all that. Um, also, you can adjust the reverse. Uh, you can set up a reverse switch as well. So uh, you can wire it into your harness or use your factory switches, and that will allow you um, to actually put the bike in reverse with a physical switch. The dyno tab is where you're gonna go. Um, you can actually do dyno runs in live time, so you can select what you wanna see. And then if you hit record, it will show up there on the map. Um, I won't touch on that right now, but under the dashboard here, I'll touch a little bit on the dashboard as well. So the dashboard is um, vertical or horizontal. Um, pretty basic information, speed, power, your lows and highs for RPM, your max wattage, as well as it displays any faults. It will display your motor temperature uh, up in the middle there if it's in portrait mode. If you do go landscape on it, it will display your motor and controller temp in the middle, which is great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you guys out. And um, yeah, happy, happy ride.